Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's uh, solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Um, I want to find the roots for x squared minus 2 equals negative 4x. All right, so the first step here uh, in using the quadratic formula is to write the formula or write the equation here in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by uh, adding 4x to both sides. So I have x squared uh, plus 4x minus 2 equals 0. Now the quadratic formula is, is beneficial because it is the only of the only one of the four methods that that you're gonna learn that works every single time. Um, the factoring method doesn't work sometimes. If you can't factor it, you can't use the quad or the uh, factoring method. If you um, if in this case it has an x term you can't use the square root method. If it doesn't hit the x-axis you can't use the graphing method. So in that case, you're stuck with the quadratic formula. Some of you are going to love the quadratic formula because um, it works every single time. So once you kind of get it going, it just kind of, you know, you kind of stick with your, your procedure here and you just keep going. It's the same thing over and over again. Some of you aren't going to like it because it can be tedious and there's lots of places to make mistakes. It takes a lot of time sometimes to use the quadratic formula. All right, so let's go ahead and keep going here. Let's say, uh, let's find A, B, and C. So a is the coefficient of the squared term. So that's this term right here. That's 1. b is the coefficient of the x term, which is, in this case, positive 4. And c is the constant. Now, you've got to remember that the signs go with these. The first two signs were positive. This one is negative, so c is going to be negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that's going to all be over 2a. It's not just, the fraction is not just under the radical or under that negative 4 at the front. It's under everything. All right, so my first step here is to, uh, unsimplifying, is to simplify the radical. So let's go ahead and, and simplify the radical first. So just to recap, I have x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 2 all over 2 times 1. All right, so again, my first step is under for this is simplifying so I'm going to simplify the radical first and then the fraction okay so let's go ahead and simplify the radical so I have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared is 16 now I treat the 4 here as a negative so negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 and the reason I treat it as a negative is because whatever I get when I multiply all those things together is the sign that it's going to be. If I get a positive 8, it's going to be plus 8. If I get a negative 8, it's going to be minus 8. So plus 8 all over 2. All right, let's keep going with the radical. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 8 is 24 all over 2. Okay, so I need to keep simplifying the radical. I'm almost there. So I'm going to pull the square root of 24 out. So the square root of 24 is the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Circle my 2's, bring one out. So I have 2 square root of 6. So I'm going to replace the square root of 24 with 2 square root of 6. So I have negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 6 all over 2. All right, I'm done simplifying the radical. So now I want to simplify the fraction. So to simplify the fraction, I really kind of have two fractions here. I have negative 4 over 2, plus or minus, 2 squared of 6 over 2. But I can combine them as one fraction since they both have the same denominator. So when I go to simplify the fraction, I'm really simplifying two fractions, but it looks like one. Um, so in order to simplify this, I'm going to look for the same number that I can take out of all three of these numbers. The square, notice the square root of 6 I have left alone. 
there is going to be a square root of 6 in my answer. Now, the other numbers, I can simplify it. I can take a 2 out of all three of these. And if I can't take it out of all of them, then I don't, I don't do anything. Whatever it is is the final answer. But in this case, I can take some numbers out of all of them. I can't take a 2 out of all of them, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So negative 4 divided by 2, negative 2, plus or minus. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Since it's the coefficient of the square root of 6, I don't need to write it, so I'm just going to have square root of 6. And then it's all going to be over 2 divided by 2, which is 1. I don't need to write the 1 on the bottom. If the 1's on top, I need to write it if it's in this term right here. Um, if it's in that term, I don't need to write it. And if it's on the bottom, I don't need to write it. But uh, in this case, it's on the bottom. I don't need to write it. So my final answer is negative 2 plus or minus square root of 6. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's find the zeros for x squared minus 3x minus 7. So I can't factor this uh, quadratic, and I also can't use the square root method because it has an x term in the middle. Um, I could graph it if I wanted to because it does cross the x-axis, but let's solve it using the quadratic formula. All right, so I'm going to put it in standard form first. Well, that's already done for me. I have my squared term, then my x term, then my constant. Next step, let's assign our variables. A is 1 b is negative 3, c is negative 7. All right, let's go ahead and plug it into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, so negative, negative 3. Let me make that a little clearer. All right, so that's eventually going to become a positive. I don't need to do it right now, but I can see it coming. It's plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now when I'm squaring a negative, I want to make sure that I put in parentheses. Uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so let's start to simplify. So we're going to simplify the radical and then simplify the fraction. Alright, so that negative negative 3 becomes a positive 3, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9. Uh, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, times negative 7 is positive 28. So I have 9 plus 28 all over 2. Now, you may end up doing that whole, um, the radicand, the thing under the radical. You may end up doing that in your calculator. Um, but I'm just showing you, just without the calculator, how to do it. So 3 plus or minus 9 plus 28 is 37 all over 2. Uh, 37 is a prime number. I can't multiply any numbers other than 1 and 37 to get 37, so that's as simple as that radical can get. So now I can simplify the, the fraction, and there's no number that I can take out of um, the 3. That's a 1, and then the 2. There's nothing I can take out of all of those. So I'm going to leave it the way it is for my final answer. So that's 3 plus or minus the square root of 37 all over 2. Hi there, it's me, Mr. B. Let's find the roots for 3x squared minus 4 equals negative x. Again, some of these you could try other methods. We're just going to kind of concentrate on the quadratic formula for now. All right, so the first thing I want to do is uh, write it in standard form. So I'm going to add x to both sides. So I end up with 3x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. All right, next step, I want to find a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of the squared term, that's 3. b is the coefficient of the x term, 1. c is the constant, negative 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, let's simplify the radical, then simplify the fraction. So negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared is 1. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Times negative 4 is positive 48, so that's 1 plus 48 all over 6. Um, 1 plus 48 is 49, so I have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 
all over 6. So I want to simplify the radical. So square root of 49 just happens to be 7. So um, I can replace the square root of 49 with 7. So I have negative 1 plus or minus 7 all over 6. Notice the radical has gone away. When the radical goes away, I can actually break this into two fractions and then keep simplifying it. So I have negative 1 plus 7 over 6 and negative 1 minus 7 over 6. So what I'm going to do here is kind of break it up into two fractions. All right, so I have negative 1 plus 7 all over 6, negative 1 minus 7 all over 6, and simplify. All right, so let's do the top one here. Negative 1 plus 7, that's 6. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Do the bottom. Negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. So negative 8 over 6, but I can reduce that to negative 4 thirds. So my two answers are negative 4 thirds and positive 1. All right, let's find the x-intercepts for x squared plus 8 equals negative 2x. First step. Write this in standard form, so I want to add 2x to both sides. So I have x squared plus 2x. Plus 8 equals 0. All right, let's find our um, variables. So a equals 1. b coefficient of the x term, that's 2. c is the constant, that's 8. So everything's positive here, so that's going to make it a little easier when I do the quadratic formula. Next step, plug it into quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Alright, so let's simplify the radical, then simplify the fraction. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root. 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 8 is negative 32. All over 2. Okay, so I can see that something strange is happening here. I have 4 minus 32 underneath the radical. So that's going to give me negative 28. So I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 28 all over 2. The number underneath the radical is called the determinant. The determinant tells me if the graph is, or the um, equation is going to have real roots or imaginary roots. Real roots means that the radical, uh, the radicand, or in this case called the determinant, if it's positive, it's going to have real roots. If it's negative, it's going to have imaginary roots. Um, so what that tells me as far as the graph goes is if I don't know exactly what the graph looks like here, but it's probably something like that. It does not hit the x-axis. I know that because my, I'm getting a negative number under the radical. So since I'm getting a negative number under the radical and the graph does not hit the x-axis, I'm going to end up with an i in the answer. So the reason we did all the work a long time ago with radicals and imaginary numbers with i's is for this reason. This is the application of the imaginary numbers. You learn how to do it before, now you're going to apply it. So I'm going to take the square root of negative 28 and I'm going to break it up into two radicals. Remember we did this way back when. Square root of 28 times square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of 28 is 2 times 2 times 7. So I'm going to circle my 2's, bring one out. So square root of negative 28 ends up being 2i square root of 7. So now I'm going to replace the square root of negative 28 with 2i square root of 7 all over 2. All right, so now I'm done with the radical. So now I need to simplify the fraction. So I'm going to look for uh, things that are in common in these three terms right here. And as you can see, they all are 2. So I'm going to divide them all by 2. They're all divisible by 2. So I'm going to um, take negative 2 divided by 2, that's going to give me negative 1. And you might, you might be saying, why do I need to write the 1 on the top? Well, if it's on the bottom, you don't need to write it. But if it's on the top, you need to write it, um, especially in that first term. You don't need to write it after the plus minus when it's the coefficient of a radical. But you do need to write it in that first term. So negative 1 plus or minus uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that's just i square root of 7. 
and on the bottom, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. I don't need to write it on the bottom. So my final answer is negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 7. And that i, the important part about the i is it tells me that the graph does not hit the x-axis. Very important. All right, let's find solutions for negative 2x squared equals 5x plus 9. I'm going to solve this using the quadratic formula again. First thing I want to do is write in standard form. So as I look at this, I can see that the, the um, x squared term is negative. I would like to be, that to be positive. I always want that to be positive. just makes everything easier. So I'm going to add 2x squared to both sides. All right, so I'm going to put the... I'm going to put everything on the left-hand side here. So I have 2x squared plus 5x plus 9 equals 0. Probably the best thing to do whenever you get a, any quadratic equation is to put it in the graph. Put it in the calculator. Look at the graph. If it hits the x-axis, there's probably different ways to do the problem. If it does not hit the x-axis, the only method you can use is the quadratic formula. That's the reason that the quadratic formula is the only one that works for every single quadratic equation, because it works for um, equations that have real solutions, and it also works for equations that have imaginary solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and keep going. So the uh, A is 2, B is 5, and C is 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, plug this into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so uh, negative 5 plus or minus the square root. 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 9 is negative 72. And this looks like it's going to be another quadratic with imaginary solutions. All over 4. Sorry about that. Uh, so let's say we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root 25 minus 72 is 47. And that's negative, negative 47. All over 4. Uh, so let's go ahead and simplify the radical. All right, so square root of negative 47 is the square root of 47 times the square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 1 is i. 47 is a prime number. There's no two numbers I can multiply to get 47 other than 47 and 1. So the answer, or the simplified form of that radical is i square root 47. All right, so let's go ahead and replace the square root of negative 47 with i square root of 47 all over 4 uh, and I'm gonna now look for things that I can simplify so I'm gonna look at this term that coefficient and that term and there's nothing in common in those three terms so I'm gonna go ahead and write my final answer which is what I have written right there which is negative 5 plus or minus i square root of 47 all over 4. And since this has an i in it, I know that the graph does not hit the x-axis. I don't know if exact, that's exactly what the graph looks like, but I know that it does not hit the x-axis because the i.